campaign have been entirely predictable. Firstly, the in-campaign launch, suitably named like a disease, with its lords of the realm, the usual old political names, the big investment banks, the large corporates, spreading fear, doom and gloom. We're not big enough. We're not good enough. We don't have influence on our own. In short, the same old establishment, many of whom said that we shouldn't join the euro. They were wrong then, they're wrong now, and they will continue to be wrong tomorrow. They remind me of the political and corporate establishment in the 1970s, who said that the best that Britain could expect was for a gentle, managed decline. The British people will not be frightened or bullied by such negative defeatism. And never again should the in campaign, after the tragic events of last Friday night, never again should they say that the United Kingdom is safer in the European Union. It is NATO, our armed forces and the police who provide our security, not the European Union. The second predictable element is the CBI, who continues its blind devotion to the European Union, regardless of the lack of any reform at all. They continue to claim to be the voice of business, when actually it appears they only have about 2,500 direct paying members. And thirdly, last week, predictably, the Prime Minister sent his wish list to Brussels, to President Tusk, with a list of demands that was weaker than even his most loyal, most faithful supporters had feared. In truth, it's no more than a restatement of the existing status quo. He's not addressing the people's concerns about key issues, about border controls, about sovereignty, about who creates our own laws and the cost of membership. He's not addressing those at all. What hasn't been predictable in this campaign has been the exciting new entrant, Leave.eu. Since we quietly started in the summer, we've secured over 300,000 registered supporters, including 1,300 councillors from all parties and over 3,000 SME business supporters. We also now have over 200 groups up and down the country set up, and that number is increasing every day. We are truly a people's campaign. We're also working closely with groups from the trade unions and from the left. And we ignored those Eurosceptics in the Westminster village who said that we should wait until the Prime Minister revealed his hand. We set up a non-political people's campaign. We're not full of high-profile names of the great and the good. We are the people's campaign and we're receiving donations from thousands and thousands of people up and down the country, donations large and small. And people from all walks of life, they want to understand the issues, to engage with what they recognise is a really important decision. It's no coincidence that since we started in the summer, we've begun to shift the polls by some 15 points. And we're now neck and neck. Some polls now put us in the lead. Different messages chime with different people, whether they're from different parties or no party at all. But the result is always the same. As people engage with the issue, as they begin to understand it, they appreciate that the United Kingdom can do so much better outside the European Union. We have an exciting vision, a confident, global United Kingdom, a United Kingdom that is big enough as the world's fifth largest economy. A United Kingdom that is good enough with the greatest capital city in the world. A United Kingdom that is free, free to set its own laws, control its own borders, and free of the handcuffs of the European Union that make us a 10% subsidiary of a lumbering EU that cannot reform, will not reform, and is declining in global economic importance in the 21st century. This referendum is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and we are ready. Whenever the referendum will be held, we are ready. 
we have the resources, we have the capacity, and we have the skills. To win this referendum, it's about the people. To borrow a phrase from one of our team, it's people that change people. We must not be dominated by political voices from one party or another. That's why I can announce today that we're going to build on the 300,000 existing supporters. We're going to launch the largest ever registration drive from now that possibly has ever been seen in this country. To win this campaign, we need to motivate people that have never voted before. And we can only do that by reaching out far beyond the Westminster village. People's real concerns need addressing. Border controls, who makes our laws, sovereignty, and the cost of EU membership. And that's why we've brought together some of the world's leading campaigners on referendum. And some of them are here today. We have America's number one referendum expert, Jerry Gunster of Goddard Gunster, who has a success record of over 90%, including a success just last week. We have Brittany Kaiser from Cambridge Analytica, who are the world leader in target voter messaging using specialist, non-traditional techniques. Cambridge Analytica have worked on over 100 elections worldwide including that in 1994 of Nelson Mandela, and they're currently advising a number of US presidential candidates. We're also working with Ian Warren, who's probably Britain's number one demographer and a real expert in the Labour working class vote. We've also got on the platform, in addition to Jerry and Brittany, we've got Aaron Banks, Leave.eu co-founder, and Liz Bilney, chief executive of Leave.eu. By voting in this referendum, this great country can move forward to better, greater new heights. When we win, the people will be left wondering, why didn't we leave earlier? Why did it take so long? Why was there so much fear? And why did our political and corporate establishment mislead us for so long? So I'm going to finish there, and now I'm going to hand over to, uh, to you to ask some questions of uh, the panel members, uh, Jerry, Brittany, Aaron, and Liz, and we'll take any questions. So, who will kick off? Yes, please. If you can say your name, where you're from, and who you want the question directed to. Chris Hope, Daily Telegraph. Just two Hi, quick questions. Hi. Um, how much have you raised? You haven't said how much you've raised. You talk about lots of donors coming in. How much have you raised in hard cash? And secondly, is it appropriate to say that the EU has made us less safe after the Paris attacks? Is that an appropriate thing to say? Aaron, do you want me to cover the financial point or are you? We, look, we've said we've got the financial resources to see this campaign through. We're not going to give a running commentary on how much we've raised. We've got the resources. The reality is, the more the better, to make sure that we win, and we win really well. So that's the, the, the financial point. Sorry? It is an answer. How much you raise? Look, we've got plenty of money. We've got the resources. We're not going to give a running commentary. Nobody does. Um, in terms of the, uh, the safer point, um, you know, I think it's self-explanatory. Uh, you know, we have yeah. spent over two million pounds to date and we've got sufficient funds to run the campaign the way we want to run it. Is that an answer? <laughs> I think also you can um, do the math because we've got 60 people in our call centre um, in Bristol, which is where our, um, the brains of the operation is. So we are running that on a monthly basis and anyone can sort of put together a budget to, to work out how much that would cost. And we are looking to grow those numbers because of the the interest in the campaign and the number of supporters coming on board. I think as Richard said as well, we're receiving donations from the general public in ever increasing amounts, which is how we want it to be funded, not by a rich businessmen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the in campaign that say the EU makes us safer. You know, the European Union supposedly is about uh, access to a single market. It's got nothing to do with security. Gary. Thanks very much. Gary Gibbon from Channel 4 News. There could be a vote 
um, that can be decisive to this stuff in the Lords today on 16, 17 year olds being given the vote. I just wonder um, if that passes, if, it, if the government doesn't bat it back, what sort of impact do you think that could have? Or is the bigger impact simply that it might delay the referendum? Because my other question is, <laughs> is that Nigel? <laughs> um, uh, my other question is, uh, w would you rather play this long rather than short? Yeah, I think, I think in terms of the 16 to 17 year olds, we intend to win that portion of the vote. I think that might be a good question for Brittany because that's one of the areas we tend to, what we're going to uh, concentrate on is how we win the young uh, end of the vote. So it may be something they come to regret, actually, if they do it. But anyway. Yeah, at leave.eu, we're going to be running a bottom-up campaign. It's great, a politician coming out and saying what they think people care about. But we're going to be running large-scale research throughout the nation to really understand why people are interested in staying in or out of the EU. And the answers to that will help inform our policy and our communications to make sure that we turn out more first-time voters, more unregistered voters, more apathetic voters than ever before. Does that help, Gary? We're ready. Yeah, I, I certainly can take a crack at that. I, I think if it's six months, eight months, or a year from now, we're going to be ready. It's, it, it's a lifetime. Um, I think even if the, the, the campaign were to happen even quicker than that, which it won't, but I don't think there's any question about it, this group will be ready. said at the time I don't think it's right gate crashing uh, conferences and as well, holding one here I feel that even more strongly um, it's not the right way to go about it um, I think the fact that the in campaign have named themselves BSE is unfortunate I guess they'll probably change it anyway never known him hide his light under a bushel, so why is your most prominent supporter behind me and not on the panel? Are you ashamed of him? <laughs> no. Mr. Banks, Mr. Banks. You could ask Nigel. But at the end of the day, this is a campaign with lots of different messengers, and it's not just a political campaign. Of course, politicians are very important, but it's not just about politicians, it's about the people. I think Richard as well, Jerry's got a point to that. Do you want to make that? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to address that. Look, there, there is a place for Nigel Farage, there is a place for Boris Johnson, there is a place for any political leader in this country because their opinions matter and there are segments of the voting population that are going to want to hear from them. But Richard has made the point that this is a people's campaign. And this is a referendum. This is a referendum that the people of the United Kingdom will decide whether or not to remain a part of the EU, and people need to talk to people. And the data that we're seeing right now says it. The numbers do not lie. If you want to have someone speak to you in a credible and believable manner about what's happening with border control, who would you rather hear from? Someone in Westminster or somebody who is actually on the front, low, front line like a border control officer or a former border control officer? So. There is a lot of messengers here that need to be a part of this campaign, and that is just the fundamental fact about a referendum. And there is a role for everybody in this campaign, but this is the people's campaign, and people need to talk to people if this is going to be successful. Thank you, Owen Bennett from the Huffington Post. Um, when people think of American politics, they think of people sort of waving flags and jumping up and down and big rallies and that kind of stuff. It doesn't really translate as well in Britain. Are you going to be running an American-style campaign here? Is that what we're going to see? Uh, not sure exactly what an American-style campaign looks like, but I'll take a crack at that question. Um, in the United States, we vote on everything. We have every election cycle, we have hundreds of referendums. We vote on whether or not we should tax ourselves. We vote on whether or not we should have a Walmart down the street. 
Just last year, the state of Maine voted on whether or not jelly donuts and pizza should be bait for bears. It's, it's crazy. Now, <coughs> that said, there was a referendum on whether or not hunters could use jelly donuts and pizza to bait bears. Dwayne lives in Maine. Dwayne, what was the result? I think they said no jelly donuts and pizza. <laughs> so let me tell you a couple of things. There's one, th there's one thing that I know, and that is data. Okay, you and I may not have that much in common. I'm from Philadelphia, I talk fast and I talk funny. I have a funny accent. But the reality is that numbers do not lie. Quantifiable data will dictate the message, the message, and the messenger of this. And I have worked all around the world, and numbers matter. American style, I, I, don't, I don't even know what that means, but I'm gonna follow the data, and the data is gonna predict whether or not we have a, a path here to be successful. Uh, hi, Josh Lowe, Prospect Magazine. Um, you said in the answer to the question about Nigel Farage earlier that um, this was a campaign in which you wanted to hear the voices of sort of ordinary people, border control staff, that sort of thing. I, I don't see any of them on the panel either. Have you recruited any of those messengers yet? Have you got people willing to deliver those kind of messages? Yeah, we've got uh, 300,000 uh, supporters and we'll definitely be, and already have, start to ask people whether they want to come forward as spokespeople. So our plan is not to have it run by politicians, but to have authentic voices. So yes, is the answer that we're reaching out to people. We've got people already as spokespeople. Who's next? Any other hands? At the middle there, at the back. Hi, do you want to? Say? <coughs> um, hello, my name is Beauville. Um, <coughs> in the lead up to the referendum, there are other elections taking place. You say you are non-political. To what extent will you lend sympathetic uh, ear to um, those parties that are also against uh, belonging to the EU? Aaron, do you want to pick that up, or Jerry? I didn't really hear the question, I'm afraid. Um, In the lead up to the referendum, there are other elections taking place. You say you are non-political. What sympathetic uh, help might you give because if those parties ah, do yeah. well in the if those parties do well in the election, it will yeah. be seen as an indicator in the same way no, I, that I Mr. Farage okay. grabbed all the EU seats, for example. I got the question now. Sorry. Um, the answer is we're non-political and we're not going to get involved in elections supporting one party or another. In fact, if you look at our 1,200 or 1,300 councils we've uh, signed up, 800 of them are Conservative, 150 Labour. There's 34 Liberal Democrats, one in the Scottish National Party, and, uh, and, and one Plaid Cymru, so they're, they're, they're everybody. And our view of life is it's non-political, and we'll remain that way. Is there one, any other questions in the middle there? Where am I? Um, Sam Byrne James, PR Week magazine. Um, I'm getting very clearly that uh, it's the people's campaign. So I got that. Uh, it's a people's campaign is kind of your key message. I'm just wondering, um, when did that phrase and actually that idea come about and how was that sort of formed as, and cemented? Um, I can't remember where it came from, that's the honest answer. And it's not, it's, I mean, it, 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 whether you call it the people's campaign or grassroots movement, uh, the, 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 it, it's been non-political from the beginning. And we realise that that then attracts in different types of people, maybe military, spokespeople, uh, sports, different people that will have nothing to do with politicians. With, with all respect to Nigel in the audience, we intend to frame it as politicians versus the public. And I think if we do that, we will win. Great. Uh, yes, here we are. Thanks, Alison Little, Daily Express. Um, I wondered firstly for Mr. Gunster how much time you're planning to spend on this campaign and if you've got any other key advice that you want to give to, um, <coughs> to people campaigning in the referendum because as you say, they're, they're rare here. And also, uh, Mr. Banks, Mr. Tice, how confident are you of getting the official designation um, when that is announced and does that matter and would you be happy to work with other groups if they, if they were to get that designation in the no campaign? I've got the last bit, you go first. 
Um, well, I can tell you I'm collecting a lot of frequent flyer miles right now. I plan on spending as much time as necessary to make sure that this is a successful campaign. And that's the bottom line. Yeah, on the, uh, on the designation, we hope there won't be a competition. Um, I think we've carefully analyzed what the Electoral Commission are looking for. Uh, I think we're over-competing every element of it. And uh, it's obviously unfortunate there are two campaigns and two sets of duplication. But I'm sure that uh, at the appropriate time, there'll be just one campaign. Anyone else? Or have we pretty much covered everyone? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think that's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time, for your interest, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.